over to you sir assalam alaikum and uh, wa alaikum assalam sir good afternoon good afternoon from malaysia uh, thank you very much sir uh, uh, professor bukhari for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk to this uh, august assembly of uh, honorable academicians and uh, this is the question which has been posed uh, for this webinar where are we standing regarding uh, integrated curriculum and what i plan is to uh, give an overview on the developing and delivering an integrated curriculum and based on this uh, overview uh, i hope the participants will be able to answer that question that where are we standing regarding integrated curriculum in their respective institutions so that's what i i uh, aiming to achieve the learning outcomes uh, the participants uh, would be able to explain the concept of integration in the curriculum discuss different levels of integration in the curriculum implement integrated curriculum efficiently and effectively and most of all evaluate the level of implementation of integrated cur curriculum in their institution which is the answer to the question which has been posed for today's uh, webinar let me start uh, with the concept of integrated curriculum and here is a picture may i invite everybody to look at this picture and uh, just tell me what what do you see in that picture anything visible that picture arses and then there is a face in the middle right absolutely right actually if you look at carefully there are so many faces yes there are so yes. many faces in this yes. picture and these faces are making this picture beautiful without being prominent that is one concept of integration that contributing to the curriculum to the best part of the curriculum without being dominant without being uh, prominent now, now there's another picture let's see how many people are there 1234567891011121 but now if you see they are 13 so somebody is integrated in the picture but not really prominent so having that uh, idea here are three very very useful very uh, useful definition of integration the first one a fully synchronous means in real time transdisciplinary delivery of information between basic sciences and clinical sciences our foundation sciences and applied sciences throughout all years of a medical school curriculum so this is synchronous and it is across the disciplines delivery of information both basic sciences and clinical sciences throughout the program that is the one definition second integration is the organization of teaching matter to interrelate or unify subjects frequently taught in separate academic courses or departments and the third which is more practical the teaching of different subjects in a thematic manner so that different disciplines are not emphasized so i think these three definitions give a very clear 
picture and concept of uh, uh, integration in the curriculum. This is a statement by uh, DMC in tomorrow's doctorates. We strongly favor true integration of the course, both horizontal and vertical, using the term in the sense of interdisciplinary synthesis and not simply coordination or synchronization of departmentally based components. As we'll go forward, you will see that coordination and synchronization are the lower level of, uh, uh, of integration. But what GMC is requiring is the interdisciplinary synthesis, which is a higher level of uh, integration based on Hardin's uh, uh, different levels of uh, integration. Here is the, uh, what is meant by uh, horizontal integration and what is meant by vertical integration. Horizontal info, uh, integration, the information taught in the same curricular phase, which may be phase one or you can say preclinical years, is taught together, usually focused around a theme or a problem. And vertical uh, integration is the information taught in different curricular phases, means preclinical and clinical, is taught together, usually focused around a clinical theme or disease. If you look at this diagram, there is a horizontal integration among the basic sciences alone, or there is a horizontal integration among the clinical uh, are applied sciences alone, but there is a vertical uh, integration between basic sciences and clinical. And if you see in the beginning, there the, the clinical component is very short, but with time it increases. Whereas to begin with the basic sciences play a major role and they become less and less towards the end. But important thing is that they are never zero. So clinical is contributing to some extent in the beginning and basic sciences also keep on contributing towards the end of the course. So it vertical integration means that both clinical and basic sciences are integrated. They contribute in the curriculum throughout uh, the the, the, the five years program which we have. This means that the basic sciences would continue teaching till year five, whereas clinical teaching would start even in first year. So this is a concept of uh, vertical integration. And we will see that how this can be implemented. There are five principles of uh, integration. First, integration focuses on key issues, important issues. As it promotes learning in context, that is in clinical scenarios, it adopts holistic approach and focuses around core curriculum, must know knowledge. Now, this is an important point and sometimes we uh, get a bit confused about it that the integration focuses only on the core curriculum and uh, not the other uh, other areas. Uh, it is true that the integration uh, emphasizes on core curriculum, but that does not mean that it neglects other parts of the course. And actually, an additional are good to know, are nice to know knowledge. Uh, the information is provided to the students, but of course the emphasis is more on the core uh, curriculum. The second, an integration enhances construction of knowledge through integration of basic and clinical sciences, as we were talking about the vertical integration where the integration of basic and clinical sciences is emphasized. Here is this interesting quote. Remo, 
to learn Master. is to connect thoughts Master. and ideas. If there is no connection, there is no learning. So this is a theory of what we call is constructivism. That students are able to connect the dots. They are able to construct knowledge, adding new information on the previously gained information and they construct the knowledge. And that is the principle uh, applied in integration. It, integration uh, focuses on construction of knowledge through deep understanding of new concepts, identification of gaps in knowledge, search for answers and use of resources and those who are familiar with uh, problem-based learning uh, curriculum or problem-based learning sessions, they uh, uh, know very clearly what is meant by gaps in knowledge and how students are encouraged to find the answers to these unanswered questions and uh, uh, through using different resources. And that is a very important uh, principle of uh, uh, integration. Application of newly acquired knowledge to solve problems, for example, in case-based learning. So problem-based learning and case-based learning are two very important modes of learning uh, in uh, uh, integration of curriculum. Third, integration promotes application of knowledge to real-life situations. Learning through problems, that is problem-based learning or case-based learning, using the knowledge gained to solve new problems. Actually, the applying the knowledge in the novel situations to solve the problems, getting feedback and improving the learning. And then the fourth is it fosters clinic critical thinking and lifelong learning skills. Uh, which uh, we know is the major um, emphasis and component of problem-based learning where students are supposed to generate hypotheses. Uh, interpreting data, uh, typical example of case-based learning, searching evidence, making decisions based on logic and evidence, and finding relationships the identifying the differences. And the fifth principle, it enforces staff development because for to practice integrated curriculum, staff need to improve their teaching skills, uh, mastering new techniques, learning how to give constructive feedback, enhancing evidence-based teaching and keeping high standards and achieving excellence in areas of expertise. So these are the five principles of uh, uh, integration. Then the models of uh, uh, integration. Uh, one body system, one module. For example, if we talk about the uh, so-called preclinical years, so we can have year one and year two as a continuum rather than two separate years. And we go uh, implement the curriculum under body systems like CVS or respiratory system or CNS. And one, uh, because the two years are continuous periods, so each module is start once. There is another uh, module where uh, our other model where uh, we can have, let's say, divide year one or year two, and we can repeat the same body systems in year one and year two as well. Of course, the year two would be at a higher level as compared to year one. And then there is a mixed uh, model where some body systems are taught once and some are taught more than once based on the emphasis we want to give. So these are three models of uh, integration. 
then the scope of integration the, the ideally the integration emphasizes because it's both horizontal and vertical integration so in let's say the phase one uh, all the basic sciences uh, and paraclinical are uh, integrated and where uh, there is clinical component as well are early clinical exposures. However, some medical schools who are still following a traditional curriculum, they may have only um, horizontal integration, for example, uh, integrating anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry only. So still following the traditional curriculum and to have some degree of integration among whatever uh, subjects they are uh, teaching. Now, then there are 11 levels of uh, integration, the famous Harden uh, level of integration. And this is important to understand and go through it because by uh, understanding this, we will be able to answer the question which was posed in the beginning that what is the uh, uh, level of integration at present in, in our institution. The, in the SPICES model for educational strategies, again, uh, a concept uh, which was introduced by, by Harden that is student-centered problem-based, integrated or interprofessional, community-based, elective posting and systematic, that is the SPICES model uh, for educational strategies. Uh, integration is pre presented as a continuum. So it is uh, a process uh, which moves forward step by step with full integration, which is transdisciplinary at one end and uh, no integration at all, which is the subject-based uh, isolation uh, at the other end. So here are those uh, uh, 11 steps, our ladder of integration. It starts with isolation, awareness, harmonization, nesting, temporal coordination, sharing, correlation, complementary, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and finally, transdisciplinary. I will explain some of uh, these, these steps. The, in the 11 steps in the ladder, the first four steps on the ladder emphasize, emphasis is on the subject or discipline. So there is a minimal uh, integration or no integration um, at, uh, in, the, in the first four steps. Then the following six steps, emphasize integration across several subjects or disciplines. And then the final step, the students take more responsibility for the integration and are given tools to do so. So it is um, completely transdisciplinary. There are no subjects uh, emphasized and the students are guided through a logbook, which may be electronic logbook to to achieve that integration. The first level, which is isolation or fragmentation um, level. Here, students attend a lecture, for example, on anatomy, and then move on to the lecture in physiology with neither lecturer being aware of what was covered in the other lecture. So it's totally independent uh, from each other uh, situation. Department or subject specialists organize their teaching without consideration of other subjects or disciplines. For example, anatomy may be uh, teaching musculoskeletal system, physiology teaching cardiovascular system, biochemistry teaching renal system. So there is no link, there is no coordination, there is no understanding. That's why it's called uh, in isolation or fragmentation. Um, I remember we were taught in, in, in this manner. 
each discipline in isolation or fragmentation, each discipline looks at the curriculum content in terms of areas to be covered, depth of coverage, sequence and timing from the perspective of their own discipline. So every subject, every discipline is concerned only with their own discipline. No attention is paid to other related subjects or disciplines which contribute to the curriculum. The relationship between the subjects is not explicitly covered and related topics from two disciplines are not intentionally uh, correlated. It might happen by chance, but there is no uh, real conscious effort to correlate uh, between the disciplines. Each subject is seen as an uh, entity in itself and the objectives are seen as mastery of the subject. That's why the feeling is as if we are going to produce anatomist or physiologist or biochemist, because the, the emphasis is on mastery of the subject uh, in each discipline. Now, we jump on to the level five, which is uh, temporal or coordination or parallel teaching. Now, situation here is that each subject remains responsible for its own teaching program. However, the timing of the teaching of topics within the discipline is done in consultation with uh, other disciplines. So this means at this level, when the timetable is being um, planned, the disciplines would talk to each other and have a common plan. This means that the timetable is adjusted so that topics within the subject or disciplines which are related are scheduled at the same time. Similar topics are taught on the same week or at the uh, day. For example, physiologists teach the functions of the heart at the same time as anatomists teach the structure of the heart. So in this way, all the uh, uh, disciplines, they are talking about the same system. This means that the curriculum is under a module. For example, if it's a, it's a CBS module and all the disciplines are teaching about the CBS. Students study the concept of different subjects separately. Still, they are being taught separately by different disciplines, however, now students are left to uncover the relationship between the anatomy, physiology, or biochemistry, whatever uh, is being taught in, in, the, in the same module. Two disciplines may agree, that is the level six, which is sharing our joint teaching. Under this um, level, two disciplines may agree to plan and jointly implement a teaching a program, which is what we call is the joint sessions. And the basis of uh, these joint sessions are overlapping of concepts or ideas. And students are shown the relationship between the two disciplines. Remember in the level five, students are left uh, to find the relationship themselves, but at level six, the students are helped to see the relationship. The example is a joint teaching session, for example, between pediatrics and obstetrics. And the overlapping or basic is the similar topic. Uh, for example, obstetric is teaching about the, the pregnancy in diabetic mother and pediatrics is covering infant of diabetic mother at the same time. So that is a joint session. Similarly, obstructive labor and the birth asphyxia. So this means that the two disciplines have a joint session. So students are shown uh, the relationship uh, between the two situations. Another example is that community child health program run jointly by Department of Child Health and Department of General Practice. So another joint program and this is level six, which is sharing our joint teaching under the Harden's 11 
uh, levels of uh, uh, integration. Another example could be parasitology and pharmacology run a joint session on malarial parasite and anti-malarial drugs. Level seven, which is a correlation or commitment um, uh, program, the emphasis still remains on the discipline or subjects, but within this framework, an integrated teaching session or course is introduced in addition to subject-based uh, teaching. The classical example is hybrid uh, problem-based learning curriculum, where subjects are being taught separately, but at the same time, there are um, the PBL sessions are, are being conducted. So it is a mixture of uh, uh, the uh, subject base as well as uh, integrated teaching to some extent. Multidisciplinary seminars or symposium is another example of uh, uh, correlation. Our assignments given to the students are designed in such a way that students have to go through different disciplines to complete that assignment. Uh, again, the, the problem-based learning sessions would definitely um, bring the correlation between uh, different disciplines. The level eight, uh, which uh, uh, most of our institutions uh, are uh, practicing, is the complementary program or mixed program. And here integrated sessions represent a major feature of the curriculum. In level seven, it was a mixture of both subject and uh, integration. And the integration was not the major portion, but in level eight, uh, the integrated sessions take over most of the time and the focus for the teaching may be theme, which is an important element in an in integrated curriculum. We'll see how uh, this is done. So focus for teaching may be theme or topic to which the disciplines can contribute. And in this level, even the examination reflects the emphasis on both integration and subjects or disciplines. For example, using uh, modified essay questions or structured essay questions or problem-based learning questions or extended matching questions. So these questions would show the, the emphasis both on um, uh, integration and, and the uh, individual disciplines. A typical MEQ, for example, would cover a number of disciplines uh, related to the scenario uh, being posed. Uh, assessment during small group sessions like PBL sessions and uh, joint sessions, which uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, may have joint questions, which is uh, extended matching questions. Now, I'll spend a couple of uh, uh, slides on the concept of themes because that is the major um, way of uh, integrating the uh, curriculum. So developing a theme of the week, let's say we are talking about uh, a module on the hemopoietic system or hematology and uh, uh, lymphoid uh, module. Uh, and uh, we see which are the major discipline which would contribute to, to, uh, to this module. So we see that it's a physiology, it's a biochemistry, it's pathology, and and pharmacology, anatomy would have uh, not a major uh, contribution to this. And what we do is that for each discipline, we ask them that what are the three topics you would like to teach in, in this module? Uh, and uh, those who are related to this uh, discipline in, in our participants today, uh, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, and pharmacology, uh, okay. You can think of the three topics which you would like to teach this module in, in the beginning. And uh, the 
usually it would be the physiology would be starting with the, let's say erythropoiesis or hemopoiesis, biochemistry with structure of he, uh, hemoglobin, pathology with anemia, pharmacology with iron deficiency, uh, iron therapy. And if you want to find a common theme which would cover all these areas, probably the theme of the week of anemia uh, can cover all, all these uh, uh, areas. So basically, the, uh, the recognizing the theme of the week is a to and fro a method where the disciplines uh, contribute and then once the theme is decided, the topics are adjusted. And of course, when we are talking about anemia, we will be talking about hemopoiesis, hemolysis, and hemorrhage, and different disciplines would contribute. This is uh, an example of a theme-based module. The same uh, theme is, is anemia and the hemopoietic and lymphoid system module. And this is an example of uh, uh, the, the integrated timetable, uh, which is a comprehensive timetable. It would give all the information uh, the, uh, uh, about, uh, about the, uh, the session in just one box, where the, uh, which is the module, is a biochemistry lecture one, it would be held in lecture room two, and the, who would be the, the lecturer. So all the information is, is given there. Now, important here it, in theme-based is that the, as the topics are arranged in a sequence, so they must be taught in that sequence. So if we need to change, we change the lecturer. We don't change the lecture. The sequence is maintained uh, uh, maximally because that makes uh, uh, the important component of um, a theme-based module. So, for example, interdisciplinary seminar on anemia, there could be number of disciplines which can contribute, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology, medicine, community medicine, obstetric gynecology, or pediatrics. Uh, it's not necessary that all of these uh, uh, disciplines should contribute to that session. We can decide um, uh, or divide among that, uh, uh, um, among ourselves, but that is an example of interdisciplinary seminar on anemia under the theme of uh, uh, anemia in for that week. So that was the level eight uh, based on the themes. The next level is uh, level nine, which is multidisciplinary. And uh, uh, in this, the multidisciplinary approach brings together a number of subject areas in a single course. Like we mentioned the, the theme and the problems and uh, uh, topics means that uh, now, uh, although we were doing through themes still, the disciplines were, were being identified and contributing. But now in this level, the disciplines, their identity is, uh, is further uh, decreased, but they are more contributing as, as a joint uh, session rather than in the individual uh, disciplines. And the courses are developed around body systems, such as CBS, GIT, CNS, and so on. Uh, just think about if we have the same modules in clinical. For example, rather than having uh, medicine and uh, pediatric and surgery, we have a module of CBS in clinical years where dis different disciplines, medicine, pediatric surgery, uh, are contributing to that uh, uh, module. So in a way, replicating the phase one or preclinical modules in the clinical years and different disciplines contributing uh, to that. So that is <coughs> forces um, developed around body system. Another approach is to 
use the stages of life cycle to develop a curriculum. For example, uh, pregnancy, uh, conception through birth, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and elderly uh, to death. So this is another way of uh, uh, developing the curriculum. So here we are going through the stages of life rather than uh, specialties and disciplines. These themes may be combination of information and skills. So it's not necessarily only on the, on the uh, knowledge, but it can be on the tasks, ethics and health promotion as well. Now the full integration, which is level 11, it's a transdisciplinary. Here, the curriculum transcends the individual disciplines. The curriculum in the first three years of students' uh, studies is integrated around body systems and last two years, students are attached for periods of time to range of specialties in the hospital and community and experience various contexts in which medicine is, is practiced. Uh, in Dundee, for example, a set of 113 clinical problems are tasks are provided to the students with a framework for integrating their experiences. So students are learning based on the problems and tasks rather than based on the disciplines and specialties. So students look at each of these tasks from the perspective of different attachment. For example, a task on abdominal pain, students may uh, have a, an acute surgical perspective and surgical attachment and different perspectives in medical, gynecological and general practice uh, attachment. Uh, a printed or an electronic study guide is a key element in helping the students with the challenge of integrating these uh, different experiences. Uh, here is an example in the integrated clock ship in ambulatory care setting in South Dakota. The students spent their whole three years attached to the clinics staffed by physicians from various disciplines. And here the students are not on a specialty or, or a blog or a module. And the, the students achieve the course uh, objectives at their own speed and by their own method. So if you uh, uh, know the, the concept of uh, the competency-based uh, medical uh, education where the, the structure is based on the competi competencies being achieved rather than on the time frame. So that gives an example of uh, uh, this, this level of integration. For example, students are in a GP clinic or family medicine clinic, and from there, they select a patient and follow the patient in the hospital. But of course, they have to follow the, 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 the guide, the, the logbook to complete all the tasks uh, given to them. And the student is driven to find out and is dictated by the uh, these prescribed talk. So looking at this uh, integration ladder, uh, Harden's integration ladder, it suggests sequential steps for development of integrated curricula. Harden makes clear the progressive nature of integration from one step to the next. Educators can easily compare their integrated curriculum projects to the Harden um, uh, descriptions and they help identify how integrated your institution or our project is. And that's where we started with this question that where we are standing um, uh, as uh, in relation to integration of curriculum and hardens these uh, 11 steps can be used to answer that questions for each of our uh, institution. Now, some of the advantages of uh, integration, it helps students to put together the facts learned so as to get the whole picture. So it is a holistic approach 
uh, we are talking about the whole uh, uh, patient. Uh, yes, uh, Prof. Rashid, please. Prof. Rashid, uh, you want to ask a question, please? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, I just reserved my oh, slide for Rashid, the question. Uh, Professor Rashid, I, can, can you give me to, uh, complete the uh, presentation and then can you write the uh, uh, question and ask at the end? Uh, yes, sir. I just uh, reserved my slot for the question. Ah, I'll okay. ask in the end. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Now, the, uh, remember we were talking about a famous quote in the beginning that learning is connecting the thoughts and ideas. And that is the holistic approach, uh, which uh, integration uh, emphasizes and enables the students. The students see the relevance of their learning to the practice of medicine. That's very important. And especially in basic sciences, that students are made aware of why they are being taught certain things. Um, for example, the, the knowledge of surface anatomy for palpation of liver or spleen in the patient or similarly, the surface anatomy of lungs to um, locate uh, the, the problems. So in this way, students know why they are learning these basic sciences and how they are related to their uh, clinical practice. And this approach motivates the students to, to learn. Students are encouraged to synthesize and apply uh, to practice. That is a very important aspect of um, uh, integration, that not only learning the facts, but applying those facts in, in real life situation. Uh, that is the basic science topics appear more relevant and less burden. For example, applying the knowledge of anatomy, physiology and pathology to explain a patient with asthma why he or she is having difficulty in breathing. So in this way, students are applying their basic knowledge in the clinical situation. Mainly the applied aspect of sciences are learned. The integrating the curriculum and identifying the core knowledge avoids overload. We know that the, the knowledge is growing so fast and we have only a limited time. So we need to uh, decide. It is important to decide what to teach and it is equally important to decide what not to teach. So because we want to avoid the, the overload. So the core knowledge is identified and covered once and not repeated in different modules and postings. For example, the metabolism of bilirubin in the hematology module, gastroenterology module, or management of patients with thalassemia and pediatrics. So rather than repeating uh, the same thing again and again, we can have an interdisciplinary uh, seminar where all these disciplines can contribute and this can uh, avoid the, the overload. Uh, as knowledge is gained and applied simultaneously, it is retained and not forgotten quickly as it happens when it is acquired in, in isolation. Uh, for example, application of basic knowledge during clinical discussions. Uh, the reticulous uh, example is of reticulocytosis in, in hemolytic anemia. Again, students are applying what they have learned and th this uh, helps in uh, retention of, of this knowledge. Integration brings teachers from different disciplines together and promotes cooperation and collaboration. Of course, it provides opportunities to staff to, to interact. Uh, there are so many uh, advantages, but of course, there are some challenges as well. Uh, while trying to maintain the horizontal and vertical integration, the discussions sometimes become too lengthy and uh, less relevant. There's a common complaint that in integration, uh, the depth of knowledge is lacking. The students' knowledge, especially in basic sciences, is very, very superficial. 
the lecturers need to be trained to take the role of a facilitator. So the, the uh, role of teachers changes when we are teaching in an integrated curriculum and we have to uh, learn that and to uh, especially dealing with over enthusiastic staff uh, because traditional system, each staff member is very, very loyal to their subject and they do not want to, to uh, compromise on their subject. Due to multiple commitments and shortage of staff, at times it becomes difficult to bring the members. So time constraint would be uh, would be there. So then the again an issue is that not all topics may fit easily into the planned integrated curriculum. So some of the topics we may have to uh, deal as uh, living alone, uh, for example, disorder of breast hernia, or some topics related to forensic medicine. Uh, integrated course tend to sacrifice the depth of the study in favor of breadth and the whereas it might appear a drawback, but that may be the aim of the curriculum itself, because we are aiming at preparing the, the house officers for further study. So we may have to um, compromise uh, some uh, depth uh, in, in, in those situations. Please mute uh, your mics. All the participants and faculty members are requested to please mute their uh, mics because there is interruption with, due to their mics. Thank you so much. The, so another is that additional resources such as clinical lab may be required for proper implementation. So the reason I'm mentioning these disadvantages are the challenges is not to say that uh, uh, we should not implement integrated curriculum, but we should uh, manage uh, these challenges. We should anticipate these challenges and be ready to, to manage uh, these challenges when we are uh, uh, trying to implement the integrated curriculum. Now, methods of delivery of uh, integrated curriculum. And uh, again, uh, when you look at these methods, you will be able to assess the level of integration being implemented in your institution. Um, uh, are you having any joint sessions or problem-based learning sessions? case-based learning sessions using uh, 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 using um, uh, even modified essay questions for teaching purposes, uh, using themes, common lectures, symposia, webinars, early clinical exposure, assignments, and projects are, are videos. Again, the uh, how much clinical component, that is the vertical integration is being uh, applied, uh, whether there is early clinical exposure, uh, whether clinical lab sessions, videos and explanations are being used. Uh, contribution of clinicians in teaching the basic sciences, again, whether the clinicians are contributing, for example, applied anatomy or, or applied physiology sessions, where the clinicians are invited to, to contribute and whether uh, we are having these joint sessions or, or, or symposia. I gave you the example of malaria, for example, the number of disciplines can come together, uh, psychology, pharmacology, medicine, obstetric gynecology, or pediatrics. Under one session, they, uh, all aspects can be covered. Uh, similarly, the assessment, the methods uh, which are used uh, for assessment of uh, written examination in uh, 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 integration system, modified essay questions, problem-based questions, or structured essay questions, extended matching questions, and assignments are uh, assessment of students during PBL sessions. And the uh, vertical modules, uh, especially, for example, the ethics and personal uh, professional developments, their questions can be uh, added in the theory papers. And then whether uh, we are having some OSCEs uh, where the, the communication skills are teaching to the simulated patients are 
doing some basic uh, investig uh, 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 physical examination like measuring pulse and BP, et cetera, are, uh, are being practiced. So that uh, concludes my, my presentation. And the whole aim was to uh, uh, make you think and uh, 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 see whether what is level of integration uh, uh, being uh, practiced in your respective uh, institution. Thank you very much for your attention mm -hmm. and I will be happy to answer uh, uh, any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, before starting any questions, uh, I will request Professor uh, General Aslam Saab, uh, can you give a few comments? General Mahmoud Aslam Saab, the Vice Chancellor, ex Vice Chancellor of uh, UHS, is here. General Aslam Saab? Uh, sir, thank you very much. It is always a learning uh, process to listen to Professor Alam Shir Khan and uh -huh. we wish him all the best of health. My question is Sir, in my opinion, uh, when I was dealing with Vi University of Health Sciences, at that time, which had 45 affiliated and constituent medical schools with it. My opinion is that currently in Pakistan, not all, but most of the colleges are having level four to level eight of integration according to Harden's levels of learning that is from nesting, nesting to complementary. Mm -hmm. I, right. And my question would be an imaginary would there be a time when the, we will be able to develop the 12th step of integration that is beyond transdisciplinary that will be merging? And when it is established, will there will be a Bible book in medical <laughs> sciences and Bible teachers? <laughs> Bible <laughs> teachers having a holistic approach because whole is more than the sum of its parts. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the, uh, the reality is, uh, the fact of the matter is that very few medical schools are practicing at that level because it is not an easy task and uh, you need a lot of resources uh, uh, for that. So most of the institutions, for example, in, in Malaysia, I know they are at the level eight or nine. And probably my feeling is that is the most appropriate for us uh, uh, under, under our uh, uh, situation. So if uh, institution is at level eight or nine, uh, I, I would be uh, very, very happy uh, for that level of uh, integration because beyond that, even the, the, the institutions who, for example, uh, only few, let's say Dundee or, or some other institutions in, in US. Uh, and usually they are graduate medical programs rather than uh, taking uh, uh, younger students. So I think to me, eight or nine would be would be good enough. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Professor Sher uh, definitely in Pakistan, it is, I do not, I am not looking any of the institution running at the level of 11. But uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College, we are almost in nine and ten level. Sir, we are also we are running this uh, uh, integrated system the, since uh, uh, 2012, when the professor Iqbal was founder of uh, principles and he started this. And uh, hopefully, I think uh, as the general Islam uh, told, it will uh, take a holistic approach. I think a slow and steady. Most of the th people from the since 20, uh, January this session. They are starting this from the first year, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, Tariq Shahid, uh, Shahid Khan has given the comments. I, I will read it. Professor, respected professor, highly appreciated your excellent talk. The approach is basically multidisciplinary rather than to specific that I have seen and learned abroad. I would like to suggest that we need to design such curriculum program by the way, I highly acknowledge Dr. Shahid, you are here. I think you are involved in multi uh, policy system and with us. And can you give the comments, Dr. Shahid? Because Dr. Shahid, you are here. Shahid Khan, you are here. Okay. Uh, before the Dr. Shahid talk, 
डॉक्टर राशिद महमूद यू हैव रेज द हैंड यस सर थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रोफेसर आलम शेर यू एक्सप्लेन दी थिंग विच इज अपेरेंटली वेरी ओल्ड थिंग but in a very different way uh, sir my question is about uh, the uh, actually not a question you can say problem that of course uh, every our institute is trying hard uh, we think we are at level 6 or 7 or 8 uh, the two issues which we which i think the students and we face number one is the when we start teaching all the subjects from first year so initially students used to purchase three books anatomy physiology and biochemistry now students have to purchase all the 13 books they have to search for the pathology book for the surgery book for the medicine book and when they purchase the book and they go to the final year the editions are then obsolete so they have to see multiple books at a time for a small topic for hemoglobin they have to see 10 books and second thing is that when we start uh, teaching them for uh, the vertical subjects uh, right from the day one they they are not familiar with the basics like uh, to teach a pharmacology in a good way there used to be general pharmacology that took many months the students should learn about what is general pharmacology yes. students must learn about the general pathology what is general pathology right before going to the hospital they should learn the basic clinical method now That's we true. don't teach them as yes, general pathology general pharmacology and we start teaching them the uh, anti tuberculosis treatment so these two issues uh, please uh, you have uh, right. what sort comments on this oh, thank you very uh, much uh, prof rashid you, you have brought very answer. you have very yes. important point basically yes. i did not mention which i probably i should have mentioned that in integrated curriculum the first module is a general module and that general module may be from 12 weeks to to maybe 6 months and in that uh, module all the things which you are saying the general things uh, general uh, uh, anatomy general physiology or general embryology they are taught and uh, that's uh, the so the students are brought on the same level field before they go to the integrated real integrated modules so the and again it helps because if students are coming from different backgrounds so this right. uh, general module or foundation modules bring them at the same level so you are absolutely right we cannot implement integrated curriculum without having a general module and general, general module would equip the students for this and number 2 the question of many books prof this is time of ebooks no more paper books yes no and more the, paper yeah and students can it's so easy to find the information now just with click of a, a mouse you can find all the all the information so uh, we cannot use the old resources to apply the new concepts so we have to move from you know the you are absolutely right by the previously by the time the book is completed and printed and comes into the market it's already 4 5 year old the knowledge has gone even beyond uh, that information which was given in the book so let's uh, move on to to the um, modern methods of uh, of uh, uh, these things and uh, as far as uh, buying of these books is concerned you have if you want to buy you have to buy uh, now or or later so but i i would suggest prof can can i really share with you that sure, honestly sure, sure, sure. i have sure. not i have not read a formal textbook in last maybe 15 years i i get always the latest uh, uh, information from the 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 latest uh, websites and uh, hardly uh, l- read any book but mostly ebook i keep on updating my knowledge but all based on the ebooks rather than on the printed books so i think we and the other com- important component when we want to implement integration is clinical skill lab that's very very important a good 
clinical skill lab is a very, very important component uh, for integrating uh, uh, curriculum. Now, talking about the integrated curriculum, uh, I remember as a medical student, we were totally in isolation fragmentation. And uh, for us to have a simple coordination that all the basic sciences are being, let's say anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry, they are talking about the same uh, subject discipline seem to be an achievement. So uh, I think we, we have to move on. Uh, and uh, as uh, 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 Prof. Aslam said that most may be at the coordination level, but then is slowly, gradually, I think we can move on uh, step by step. And sir, how to Professor manage this? Uh, uh, can I add a few things uh, for sure. Dr. Raj's question? Okay, yeah. uh, you will be glad to hear that in Pakistan, especially RMU and uh, Muzaffarabad Medical College, because we are running the system, they are developing this book, which are based on integrated curriculum. You can even buy these books from um, Raval Pindi, because if you are going to teach one subject, this is not only being solved by the e-books, as the professor uh, Sher Alam has told, but they are with the passage of time as this is becoming more and more popular. Dr. Uh, Ayub is here. Dr. Ayub is our uh, director of the uh, this. Dr. Ayub, can you comment uh, about this, that how we are solving the problem of our students from the last 11 years because we are not, our students are not concerning the journal books, the list of the so many books. So this is also, Dr. Ayub. Uh, Dr. Ayub. Uh, uh, yes, Dr. Uh, Ayub. And uh, 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 Ayub is here. Professor Ayub. <coughs> Sir, what about say if we are studying I or there are 100 students, so uh, ideally all 100 students should go and see the patients of cataract. And in words, there are so many students, they are rotated, 15 to, to students, they are going to I ward, the 15 are going to ENT ward, 15 are going to gyni ward. So other students are going to ward and they are studying and they are going to study and they So how do we manage this? Kerte uh, mein, sir, at the at the moment you have uh, the, the, the clinical years may students are rotated. Let's say Hamare year three may five year che posting hai, pediatric hai, medicine, hai, surgery, hai, obstetric gynecology, hai, uh, maybe psychiatry. Hai. So students are divided into small groups and uh, the the uh, phir unki jo postings hai, they are rotated. So uh, obviously, not uh, students can be accommodated in, in one discipline. So they uh, wo rotate. Karte. Rotate. Karte. Uh, Dr. Sarma Kundi, Professor Sarma Kundi, Principal uh, thank of uh, you. Medical uh, University and ex president of PMA. Uh, yeah. in, uh, Professor Sarma Kundi. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Mulazam Saab. It was an excellent talk thank by you, Dr. Allah. Alam Sher Saab. Uh, it was really, really fascinating. The only concern I have is that we get students in first year, they are never exposed to clinical wards, to hospitals, even the students of second year. Mm. And they're taught a bit of medicine, a bit of surgery. And somehow when they get exam questions, those are all clinical based scenarios and the students are not exposed to it. It is mm. the fifth year that we have adapted the system courtesy the KMU, our uh, university of Every college is supposed to be by notification of the provincial assembly. It has to be affiliated with that university. And they have the system, but it's a grave concern for me. They're not exposed to the clinical scenario and they are getting questions which are a little high level for them. Like the questions which a fourth year or a final year student can solve. How can we overcome this stepping stone? Uh, Thank right. you. Uh, uh, Madam, if uh, I may share my, my experience. Now, what we have, what we call is early clinical exposure. Let's the, take the example of cardiovascular module in, 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 in phase one, our so-called preclinical. Now we teach so many things to, 
uh, in let's say the ECG and the uh, uh, other things, the, the cyanosis and the pallor. And the, so what we do is that in the last week of their uh, module, for example, it's a, a six weeks module or five week module. In the last week of module, we rotate these students to the clinics. We bring them to the hospital and show them what we have taught them earlier. We show them what cyanosis looks like. We show them what pallor looks like. We show them how we take blood pressure. We show them how we talk to the patient, how we communicate with the, uh, with the, with the relatives. So this is what, and some of these things we can do in clinical skill lab as well. So this is what we call is, uh, is early clinical exposure. Now, if we use clinical scenarios for questions, but the questions are basic sciences. If the, 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 the scenario is a, a patient comes with cyanosis, a scenario can be a, any scenario, any clinical scenario, but most important is what is question being asked. And if on cyanosis, we are asking the, let's say this is a, a person who has a respiratory difficulty and presents with, uh, uh, let's say difficulty in breathing and cyanosis, and we want to ask the pathogenesis or pathophysiology of cyanosis. So we are asking basic science questions in relation to clinical, so that gives student uh, an idea that how these things are being, uh, 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 applied in, in real life situation. So uh, to me, scenario is, is, is not that important as important is the question which we are asking uh, on that scenario. If the questions relate to basic sciences, and again, that is a, a very uh, uh, a wrong concept in, uh, in some of us, that the problem-based learning sessions we have made them problem solving learning sessions. Problem based learning is to learn about the problem, the understand about the problem and not necessarily solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It is the case based learning, which would be in the clinical years where they have to solve the problem by applying what they have learned in the preclinical years. So they, I think they, there is some some confusion, some uh, concept, uh, misconception, in in and the PBL sessions, like the scenarios used in PBL sessions, are clinical scenarios, and the the same scenarios can be used in in examination, but the questions should be related to basic sciences, not to clinical sciences in year one and year two uh, uh, at that level. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, Dr. thank you so much. That means we have to contact our university. Dr. Hmm. Rashid is from the same university and hmm. the paper setters have to be trained properly so that they give different levels of questions for every year. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Dr. Alam, sir. Absolutely. Dr. Anila, Dr. Anila Jalil. Dr. Oh, hello, Jalil. Gigi, Gigi. Salam alaikum. I am uh, Dr. Anila, Professor Anila from Shalimar Medical and Dental College. Um, yeah, there's an Madam, you are muted. Unmute, please unmute yourself, Madam. Unmute, okay. Dr. Anila is from Shalamar Medical College. Uh, please unmute yourself, okay. Any, any else? <coughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, just I want to uh, um, uh, ask uh, that. Uh, uh, in a uh, in a curriculum <clears throat> integrated curriculum in a module uh, how you overcome uh, that uh, thing that of supposedly if a, a subject has less weightage and uh, when you examine the module according to the table of specification uh, then um, uh, it may there's a chance that the students may uh, not study that uh, part of it, uh, which is which has less, uh, you know, weightage in that um, system. So, how we can overcome that? Uh, right, uh, that's uh, that's very interesting uh, 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 question. Um, I may share that what we used to do in uh, in uh, medical school when we were students. Some of our uh, uh, 
friends would uh, staple a whole chapter in the book that no need to read about it because uh, uh, there wouldn't be any question or would be only a uh, very less number of questions from that. But in integrated curriculum, the, the, as we mentioned during the presentation, the main emphasis is on the core curriculum, not on minor print. So the, we have to remember that these are undergraduate medical students and we are preparing them to be a house officer. We are not preparing them to be anatomist, physiology or biochemistry or a specialist. And uh, our examination questions should be based on the major areas, the core curriculum rather than on minor prints. Minor prints would come in play when they go for specialization. For example, if you are going for a specialization in surgery, the whole anatomy would be taught again. And that's the time where the minor prints should come. So the in, uh, in uh, our undergraduate, the emphasis should be on major uh, com um, components. And again, probably the passing mark should not be 50%. It, 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 it should, should be should be high because uh, the uh, when you are doing the core curriculum means that something which you must know. Core curriculum is you must know. If you don't know, you you may not uh, qualify for that. So we need to think about that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure the Dr. Nigat, Dr. Nigat uh, Nadim. You are the earliest uh, participant in this <laughs> webinar, Dr. Nigat. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Nigat Nadim from LMGC Associate Professor DME. Dr. Alam Sher, thank you very, very much. First, uh, you are always, Mashallah, very informative. Um, my general reservation is I have also written in the chat. Uh, one, I would like your comment on the assessment for level eight. And secondly, I would like to ask that is there any bar that we have to have in assessments, um, SAQs or MEQs? Can it only be on MCQs? And uh, thirdly, uh, if we are uh, correlating or complementing our subjects in first, second year, like anatomy with surgery, clinical radiology, and the other two subjects, physiology, biochemistry, with the um, pathology community, uh, and um, some other subjects like medicine uh, or rheumatology even. So when we are going to give them assessment for these subjects, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry in the first three years, are our scenarios going to complement what we have taught them, say, in a spiral with the other subjects, which were actually going to be taught in third, fourth, final year? Or they are just taught, but their element in or weightage in assessment would not be the same, or is it necessary to be the same? Thank you. Okay. Now, Madam, the first thing we need to realize is that no single method of assessment is perfect. We have to have a combination of what they call is menu of assessment methods. So only uh, NCQs uh, are only one method may not uh, be sufficient. So usually we combine the methods so weakness of one method are covered by, by the strength of, of the other method. That's number one. Number two, we should realize that not everything we are teaching must be examined. And uh, there would, you, you see, we have some very in, um, uh, introductory sessions in, in, in uh, first year or second year where the, the clinicians and physicians or surgeons are coming main aim is to create an interest in the student mm. and to show them the relevance. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's not necessary to examine those things uh, uh, because the purpose is to create or to motivate the students. Thirdly, as we said earlier, we, it is good to use clinical scenarios, whether we are using modified essay question or structured essay questions or extended matching questions that gives uh, 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 the feeling of relevance to the, to the students, but questions should be according to their, their level. You can have a rheumatology, for example, uh, scenario, 
but the questions should be related to uh, whether they are year one students or year two students. So based on the, the for example, you, you are giving the, the restriction of movements, for example, of upper limb, where there's a person who cannot move their limb. And, but the questions would be, which muscles or which nerves are, 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 are affected? Yes. Yes. So the, as I said, the most important is what you are asking. As we know, the same books are used for undergraduate and postgraduate students, but the, their level of uh, understanding and learning is different. Even the same questions are being asked, the uh, uh, same scenarios are being asked, uh, but the yeah. question is different But the, the, the final year and the first yeah, year. Yeah, questions are different. So yeah. let's, are different. let's concentrate on questions, uh, the level of questions. Level of the question. Professor Munir, Mohammed Munir is uh, uh, our uh, professor of pathology. Um, sorry, can I just make okay. one comment, Dr. Razi? Can I just make one okay, comment? Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Thank you so much. I'll just take a minute. Um, I just want to say that in LMDC, we had been practicing early clinical exposure. And uh, it's not uh, very difficult what we, before COVID, because you see after that, there was uh, one or two years, I've not been very good <laughs> regarding that. Anyway, what we used to do is uh, one batch of the first and second year practicals used to go to our uh, hospital. And uh, surgery and light and medicine and light had uh, made a proper perform of how and where they were going to take them. It was not in actual contact with the patients, but it was giving an awareness of the hospital environment, which prepared them by the time they will go to proper clinical wards in third year. And secondly, the, the most important thing is that if you can't uh, take the students to the hospital, you can bring some time if feasible, the patient to the college. It can be converted into kind of a CVL. Um, maybe again, like you've said, the uh, level of question, the level of, uh, of teaching in these CVLs would be considering their first and second year students. So early clinical exposure is not that difficult, but one, what needs to be do uh, to be done in this is remember these are first and second year students, and our first and second year students are just coming from FC and A level, and they are hardly 18, 19. Um, abroad, mostly the students are more mature, especially in America. They have to do a four year undergrad before they go for that. So we just need to keep the level of uh, their interaction in clinical exposure in first second year uh, contained. Then it becomes very feasible. Yeah, thank you very I, much. I think, the, the, I think, Madam, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, what we uh, do is that uh, uh, when we are bringing the students to to hospital, we actually bring to different hospitals in the different wards. We, with the help of clinicians, we pre-select the patients. So uh, by when the students go to the hospital, we already know that which patients are going to be shown to the students and what is, are the learning outcomes, they are clearly uh, identified. Uh, the, uh, bringing the patient to the students is, is, is an other, other solution to, to, to that issue. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, professor Mohammad Munir, uh, the professor Thank of pathology you. and uh, 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 director of student affairs in fourth year. Uh, MBBS Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College. Do Dr. Mahat Munir, you, are, you have raised that question. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bolazo Musair. It was a very nice. And you are uh, also a director of uh, a library, sir. You see, my question is you see, the start from the development of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I had been, you see, involved in for the last 10 years in integrated system. My question is what not to include in the curriculum? Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, that's, that's very, very important, Prof. Very important. <laughs> the, the enthusiasm we have as teachers, I'm a pediatrician and I want my students to graduate like pediatrician. Ah, this is a problem. The, 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 the physiologists want them to be the physiologist. So we should remember, number one, that we are producing house officers and they have another one or two years to learn before they start practice. So that's number one. So we are not producing specialists. We are not producing basic scientists. 
At the same time, we are not producing nursing students. We don't want to teach them how to make bed, right? And uh, we and we are not uh, uh, producing uh, pathologists, so we don't uh, need them to do all the pathology techniques and that. So the best way is what we call is top-down approach. Uh, what yes. again? Repeat it. Which approach? The top-down approach. Top-down approach. Approach yes, from top. top. So just identify the, the attributes of a graduate. For example, a student is graduating. So what should be the uh, level of knowledge? What should be the level of skills? What should be the level of attitude you expect from a graduate? And now you have the, the outcomes. You have the outcomes of the program and the rest of the program should work towards that outcome. Mm. For example, I uh, uh, commonly I talk about doing lumbar puncture. If you expect your graduate to perform a lumbar puncture, then now you know what kind of knowledge they should have, what kind of skill they should have, what kind of attitude they should have. So then from that, you bring these things down in the curriculum. For example, <laughs> circulation of CSF, formation of CSF, uh, the, the uh, anatomy of uh, uh, a spinal cord. So I think that the starting point is from top down. Just identify the attributes of your graduate and then, so in that way, you would forget about the minor things. You would concentrate on the major things. Okay, Dr. Uh, Asif, Dr. Muhammad Asif from Sialkot. Dr. Muhammad uh, Asif. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yes. clearly. Yes. <clears throat> oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Muhammad Asif, Associate Professor of Surgery from uh, Sialkot Medical College. Uh, uh, it is uh, a very uh, good and excellent uh, talk about the integrated session. Uh, I'm just uh, inquiring about uh, about uh, the e-resources you have uh, talked about, that uh, there are some e-resources which are available to us uh, for the uh, guidance of the students. Uh, can you please share uh, with us the, these resources so we can uh, guide our students? All right, um, uh, sir, if you, you just search on the net, uh, but you have to be careful that what site you are searching. So try to find out the scientific sites, right? Like e-medicine, for example, and the, the science direct. So these are the resources. Some of them are free. And uh, then again, coming to, uh, I think YouTube is another very useful resource. Uh, where number of procedures and the methods are given. Uh, similarly, uh, something Khan, um, the, the, uh, the videos and audios, they're actually, honestly, I learn a lot from them because they explain in uh, such a simple terms that sometimes difficult concepts, which I find it difficult to understand, uh, they they become so clear. So if uh, you you uh, go through this and just spend some time and uh, identify these resources, and uh, in fact your students might uh, uh, be helpful to you to find these resources. And as I said, many of them are free, uh, so uh, they they can be used. Similarly, ebooks. E um, some of them are. Uh, loaded uh, on the on the net and they can be used um, and it's so easy to read them because you can search very quickly uh, you can type your question and uh, uh, find the answer and the the uh, this latest buzz is this some chat box so, so a lot of information is there in that as well okay. Okay, uh, Bukhari, I have a comment. Okay, okay, you are allowed, sir. You are allowed. Uh, 
Thank you very much, Professor Alam Sher. You have talked about the top-down approach. You have talked about the core content and the core concepts. I am sure you, you will agree with me that the core concepts for a graduate student will be different than the core uh, content for a nursing good. student. Absolutely right. I think this is the high time that the medical education experts from all over Pakistan sit together and develop the, you see the curriculum, integrated curriculum, which is uniform and which is employed. Uh, Dr. Asif, please mute. Okay, yes. continue, Professor Munir. Professor Munir, you are uh, uh, okay. Uh, Professor Munir, uh, I I think, sir, uh, Professor Munir was talking about a central uh, body which can okay. help the the yes yes in the, the medical schools, and I think uh, UHS uh, is is uh, in. Uh, 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 in such position, I know that uh, yeah. uh, Professor Alan Asimawa, Shere, uh, last month, I think two two months ago back, uh, Professor uh, uh, Abdul Wahid Rathor, Vice Chancellor, called the meetings of all the principals, and I think uh, it was in the November or something end of this, and they are uh, they made the committee and uh, to make the uniform curriculum uh, for this integration, and he has also advised all the uh, colleges working under the UHS to start this uh, in the beginning of the uh, uh, new session of this one. Okay, uh, doctor. Sir, uh, sir, Isma, uh, if I can add, just add, a university should have, let's say, about 70% yes. uh, common. And then yeah. another 30% should be the, should be given the liberty to the medical schools that they, they add their own uh, uh, innovations and, and methods. Uh, sure, sure. I think that uh, we 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 should give that uh, independence to medical schools as well. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Vahi, uh, Dr. Masood Ilahi, you are our senior and very senior uh, colleague. Uh, because uh, uh, can you give a few comments about it? Because what in the USA nowadays and what you are looking ab about the integrated system, Masood Ilahi. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Walaikum Sam, sir. Actually, you know, I was just uh, joining <clears throat> to refresh my uh, those, you know, other <laughs> side that <data. laughs> it is. It is almost two two o'clock mid midnight, you know, for early oh. morning here. Oh. Oh, oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you but, very much. Uh, sir. Still, you know, because uh, you uh, invited me through the uh, that uh, group, and you know, I was here, and Doctor, I Alam share. We used to be friends together, you know, if he recalls, you know, he and Tahir Meer and myself. So, you know, there right, was another right, right, attraction sir, for right, me. Sir. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't realize earlier. <laughs> so, no, it's never too late, Alam Sher. Yeah. It's never too late. <laughs> yeah. But uh, coming back to coming back to your uh, this one uh, invitation that, you know, I have been mostly been uh, involved with the administrative uh, issues. So I was not uh, involved with the medical education issue. So, you know, it is uh, my, uh, just uh, as a learning curve, uh, cur you know, I was joining that one. And it was interesting. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Masood Ilai is our senior Kaidians, uh, and uh, that is why I, oh, uh, sir, not, sir, of honor, uh, not of honor for him, sir. Professor, okay, Bukhari, last... we, we, we used to have good times together now. <laughs> now when I recognize him, uh, you know. Uh, okay, last question. Last question, Dr. Rashid Saab, uh, because time is over, there are so many other questions, but I will request them to uh, send me on my WhatsApp group uh, on our website and we'll, inshallah, uh, uh, have another session, continue session. And next coming okay. session is Professor General Aslam uh, on the heart. Delko kaise bachana hai? General Aslam Saab batayenge egli dafa. Uh, again, next Sunday, we, can, we have continuous webinar. Uh, Dr. Rashid Sahib, last question. Yes, sir. I have raised a hand for a request because all stakeholders and webinars are present. 
ये वेबिनार हर संडे को होता है ग्यारह बजे और आलम शेर साहब एक बहुत अच्छा वेबिनार करते हैं महीने में एक बार दोनों की टाइमिंग एक होती हैं और इसमें हमें बड़ा लाज होता है तो वो एक वेबिनार को हम कोऑर्डिनेट कर लिया करें ताकि वो डुप्लीकेशन ना आया करें हम उसको ज्वाइंट कर लिया करें डॉक्टर राशिद डॉक्टर राशिद यू नो दैट दिस इज दूनिक वेबिनार दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम लास्ट ईयर एंड दैट इज वाई वी ट्राइड अवर बेस्ट बट वी फेल टू Uh, bring our uh, participants because not, not only the participants are here, certain students are there. So I think, inshallah, uh, let's uh, see discuss with the Salma Kundi, uh, Professor Salma Kundi. Now it is over to you to conclude, Professor Salma Kundi. Thank you so much, Professor Mulazim Sab. It was such a wonderful talk. I am very very thankful to Dr. Alam Sheikh Sab. for enlightening us and i'm thankful to all the participants the man behind the gun of this show is mulazim bukhari sahab hats off to him and i thank you all from the pma platform for regularly attending these webinars what dr rashid said is something very cogent what we can do is we can link it up with dr alim shares whichever yeah. sunday he has if he sends us the link we will send that link from the pma platform to our group as well definitely and stay blessed all of you and i hope the medical education in pakistan improves and so does the standard of living of our fellow countrymen may allah bless all of you and pakistan pakistan zindabad have a good day thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much once again professor shira thank you very much and you gave the time and also thank uh, to all the participants inshallah we will meet next sunday with the lecturer professor janal aslam sahab thank you very much sir thank you for uh, the invitation and uh, your attention uh, dr alam sher our this webinar is a integrated webinar because sometime we are conducting basic sciences and we are linking this basic sciences with clinical sciences and clinical sciences my 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 next webinar under med is webinar series is on 22nd of january uh, which which is okay. on um, uh, uh, 22nd it is on uh, uh, developing the rubrics and uh, and marking schemes uh, okay what is the time because we have also the same, uh, same webinar is the it's, it's uh, 11 o'clock pakistan time Uh, actually uh, because prof i have uh, participants from uh, let's say about 23 countries so uh, uh, the if i just move the time i uh, let us start our dr alam sher our 22nd webinar is from the united state of america professor sarwat on the artificial intelligence and that will definitely we uh, there will be the change of the time because at this time there is a midnight as dr masood ali is saying and uh, our session the 22nd made uh, it will be not on the 22nd and it is 22nd webinar is intelligence artificial intelligence uh, and in before this is uh, i have just announced after general assam saab thank you so much sir inshallah so, 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 sorry sorry sir what time would be this uh, artificial intelligence i will i will send you because i will uh, will change the time uh, uh, i will adjust the time uh, right. with your uh, uh, webinar sir yeah uh, please please aapne kya bataya aapke ka kya time hai 11 baje ha ji pakistan ke 11 baje nahi we will change it sir we will hum 7 ko sham baje sham ki 7 baje karenge thank you so much ji thank you all of you all of bless all of you thank you general aslam oh thank you very much thank you very much god bless you all thank you sir thank you very much sir allah hafiz thank you alam sir sir thank you very much thank you very much